Welcome back to a new video here in Suave. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this sort of grid or mosaic uh, where you can put like, it's like a gallery where you can just add your images or videos and then showcase them in a really interesting way. Now, let's get started right away. We have our pictures and media here. And if you want to check out what the composition will look like at the end, I'm going to show you that here. Okay. First thing, we're going to go into a new Fusion composition. If you don't know how to create a new one, just simply right click here in this media section, then create a new one and then go into it. Also, make sure to check the description if you want to download these as a template. It's free. The first thing that we're going to need is a background node. So we're going to connect these to our media out section and then we're going to make these transparent. We're going to bring these to the main screen and then here we're going to add a grid so that we can see where we're going to position our images. We can add three cells or five if you want. It's really up to you. But in this case, we're just going to try to use that as a guide. Now, before doing anything else, what I want to do is I actually want to change the size of our line here. So we're going to make these at 0 0.002. That way, when we make and adjust and put our image right here, then it fits perfectly and there's no space in between them. Okay, let's start by using a background node again that we're going to later replace. Then we're going to press transform and we can connect these here already. And we're going to make these really small until it fits our edges here or right on top of the line. Now it might not fit perfectly, so it's going to be like 0.33 usually. But it's really up to the details and how much time you want to spend on doing this. Okay, and then, then we're going to copy and paste these two times. If you have five, then you will have to do it five times. We're going to bring these a little bit to the side and create these as a merge node for each of them like that. And now we can see the three of them are in position here. We can leave this one in the middle. We can go to this one and move this to the right side and using the lines to align it. If you want, you can hold control and press the other transform so that you know where the other one the other line is that way you can adjust it. So that's right next to it. OK, so you if you notice here, there's a little bit of space right in between them because of the lines that we're using as a guide and that can make things a little bit difficult. So you have to play around with the size if that bothers you. Uh, so we can actually just go here and holding control, we can make this a little bit bigger and then copying and pasted that value on the side of the other ones. So they all have the same size. After that, we're going to move the third one to the left side. And a little bit like that should be fine. The thing is that if we get rid of the grid, we can see the size that's right there, right in between them. So that's what the main problem with these is. So to fix that, I think that 0 0.333 or 0 0.33, because that will be infinite, is uh, accurate enough to the, so that they are all side by side and there's no space in between. After that, we can add this grid here again, and we're going to group these by pressing Ctrl G and we can name this mid. Double click these if you want to see it open and holding Ctrl and spacebar, we're going to add a new transform node to these. Then what we can do is instead of having to build everything, we can just copy and paste these. Now, if you want to name things or change the name, press F2 while it being selected and you should be fine with that. Then we're going to have to adjust the height of our transform here. So the positioning of this first one. And if you want to be accurate and see where the boxes are, you can actually hold control and select these three so that you're able to see where the box is. And you can still adjust the place or positioning of this other one right here. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Now we have our grid, but everything is black, so we don't see the difference here. You can already change this with the media files that you have. Now, make sure they are all in the same resolution because the transform node is going to take into account that. So if your image, for example, is not 1080p, then it will be a little bit bigger. And then there will be a weird space that you will have to fix by adding a mask or a rectangle it so that they all have the same height. OK, let's just change this and I make sure that all the pictures and videos are in that same resolution. 
Okay, now after we have that, we can already see that there's all our medias here. And what you can do is we can animate these. So each line moves individually towards like a certain direction, right? It's all up to you how you want it to move. So this part, that's why we have this individual transform node here so that nothing else is uh, moved when you move that section. That way you can create individual keyframes and move it at uh, the speed and direction that you want. We can move these to the size to this side. And now one issue that we have here is that it's going to be transparent. That is why we can add a canvas here and then change this to wrap. And that's going to repeat the image that is on this side and the opposite. And that is how you fix that part. OK, let me just continue and add this keyframes to the other two lines. OK, and I'm not going to render the whole thing right now because I'm recording and that's going to take too much resources. But the next thing that we can do is we're going to go here to this last merge node and we're going to add a plane here, an image plane. That way we can turn these into the 3D camera movement that you saw in the example. And we're going to replace it here with the ending mod. Here we can work with two screens. We can make this one a little bit bigger and close this media pool section. And if you want, you can press one. That way we can see what's on camera right here. We don't see anything right now because our camera is right on top of our plane here. That is why. But once you move the camera to like further away, you will be able to see it perfectly. There we have that. So somebody emailed me an After Effects video which showed this similar process and it was by Sonduck Film. And what they did was they added a duplicate of these here. That way you can move the camera and it's all going to still be like on frame and it's not going to be just like a blank or dark spot or black here. OK, so for that, we can actually just add a duplicate 3D. And then if you have three copies, the thing is that when you offset them, it's a little bit hard to make them one go up and one go to the bottom. So that's why, why we have to add two. We can zoom in here so that we can see these touching the edge. And make sure it doesn't overlap because that will create some weird pixel, pixels. Here on our camera, we can actually just increase the height. And once we see it aligned right here, we can create a target. And we're going to move our target right here to the mid section of the composition. Now, after you have all these set up, what you can do is we can animate the camera movements. First, we're going to create a zoom out animation. So for that, we are going to be creating the first key from right here at zero. And then whatever, however long you want it to be, doesn't matter. It could be 30 frames and create the second one. That's going to be the ending one. So for the first one, we actually want to zoom in these. So we're going to bring the camera closer so that our first picture is right at the center there. So then it's going to start and sort of like zoom out and we're going to see everything that we have here. With this first movement, what we can do is go to the camera and we can press F and then T and then we can ease this in or out. It's really up to you. However, you want to customize these. And that is basically how you would add the camera movement. So if you want to add a second animation that's sort of like a cut right from here, what you have to do first is make sure that you have keyframes or of all of them on all of them. And then we can go one more frame and then we're going to set up the next shot right here by just moving the camera to whatever position that you want it to be on. For example, it can start right here at the bottom. And here the possibilities are endless. You can go to the controls and change the angle view, make it smaller. It's really up to you. I'm just going to leave it by default the way it was. And we're going to just make this be a little bit closer. And then we're going to move this camera around again. After we have that second shot, we just got to make sure that we have all the keyframes again here and then we can set up the third shot here, which can be really whatever you want. It's really up to you how you're going to set up these shots. OK, I'm not going to play out that whole sequence right now because it's going to take too much time and resources to render while recording. But 
Here, what you can do next is if you want the movement to be a little bit smoother, you can just select all of these in the spline tool here and then press F. It's really up to you. I'm just going to leave it like it is right now. I, li I like it a little bit linear in this case, but it's really up to you. Now, the next thing that we can do or that you can see in the example is that we want the main screen that we see to have sort of like a blur to the sides. So for that, we can actually just press Ctrl space bar and we're going to increase the blur to these. If we press two, we're going to see that main composition that we have here on camera already. And you'll see that it's blurry if we increase this. And then we're going to add an ellipse here as a mask. And we're going to invert these. And we're just going to make these like that. And we can actually just make the edge a little bit soft so that the blurriness is not that sharp. And that way we have that sort of blur that happens on the side. You can also add a camera, a motion blur to the camera by going here to the render 3D section and add a motion blur. And I actually like it to be really like 30 or 80 sometimes. I don't want it to be too blurry. So we're just going to leave it like that. And now for the last touch that you can do to add is you can just find a, a light leak effect on a stock website and then just add it right on top of these. And then we're going to change these mode to screen and then decrease the gain of it or the blend. Just play around with how it looks and find the way that you like it the most. And then after adding that light leak, all that you have to do is just go back to the edit page. You can just go ahead and copy these and then just create a render of this composition right here in place if you want to see it. Or you can, if you're already happy with the end result, you can and render it with the delivery page. Now that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to check the description to find the files and the fusion composition of these. Also, if you want some DaVinci Resolve assets, check out my titles pack and transitions pack for DaVinci Resolve on the website suave.com. And if you can afford them, don't worry. There's a ton of freebies on the website too that you can download and use for free on any kind of project that you have. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful and that it gave you some pretty cool ideas of how to build these and that way you can implement these on your own projects or your client projects. I'll see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.